looks like I'm going to have to call in the BPRD team here at Braddock Media this week. Why? Because it's Hellboy Day. That's why. I am so mind blown by this statue. This has to be one of the most beautifully detailed and painted pieces that I have ever owned from Sideshow. This is the non-exclusive premium format Mike Magnola edition from Sideshow Collectible and Toys and it is just gorgeous. In this week's episode, I'm going to go over and break down all the different pieces on this. The costuming is just incredible. So yes, stay tuned for that. We're going to talk about box art. We're going to go over a little bit more about Mike Magnola himself, the Hellboy graphic novel series, and how I kind of got drawn into this after watching the movies. So yes, let's head over to box art. Oh. So here's your warning, everybody. This is definitely a spoiler-filled edition of box art this week. I'm going to get right into it here. The front of the box has the main statue. This is a very much a sideshow box. It's a little lackluster after the Jessica Rabbit one that I reviewed on last week's episode, which had so many cool tie-ins from the movie. It was really great. This one is, again, very sideshow, very branded statues on the box. So it's still beautiful. It's nice. Got a little dinged up in shipping, which you can see here. And, you know, that happens. The side of the box continues off from the front. It has the BPRD logo, which the Bureau of Paranormal Research and Development, which adopted Hellboy when he came to Earth. And then the back of the box has his crown and head sculpt. This is a must-have for any collector that is a fan of the Hellboy series, and I'm really glad that Sideshow actually included this in both the exclusive and non-exclusive version. It's, it's just, it's a really great piece. Going back to the front of the box, I'm gonna explain what I would have personally liked to have seen on this. I would have loved to have seen Mike Magnola's actual artwork on this. I would have liked to have seen this statue drawn by him on the front, a big BPRD logo on the back, would have just been the perfect touches in this piece. So now that that's kind of talked about, I'm going to go right into Mike Magnola. Here's where a lot of the spoilers come when it comes to Hellboy. He's a, somebody who I do look up to as an artist. In the early 80s, he was working for Marvel Comics. In the late 80s, he was working for DC. And in the nine, like early 90s, so I guess 93, he ended up taking the move to Dark Horse Comics, which is a really huge thing for an artist to do, to take, you know, go from something that's so paying the bills and stable, especially with such large companies like Marvel and DC, to jumping into something that he had no idea where it was going to go. But he did get to finally create something with his own art, his own image, his own thoughts, and his own designs. And Dark Horse is definitely the winner when it comes to comes to this. It's a great series. It's, I mean, it started in 94 with Seeds of Destruction. It's gone on to doing uh, 13 graphic novels, four spinoffs. Those spinoffs are Abe Sapien, Lobster Johnson, Witchfinder, they're just they're really great great and bprd bprd is probably one of my favorites for sure and different novels uh two animated movies as well as the two films in the hellboy franchise he likes to say that it was because of the movies that ended up going as big as it did but it really honestly had such a massive fan following behind it and people that loved the series i have to thank my brother-in-law who actually directed me to this after you know gushing about the movies and how i liked it and when i went to order the statue i was just in love with it and i'm so grateful he did i've read all of them i've read all the spin-offs i've watched the animated movies they're just so beautifully done and so well detailed and it's such a different artwork and different design that it really pulls you into it a little bit more than a lot of other comics that are very similar in nature and very similar in image. You just really kind of dive into this. You learn about Hellboy's father. You learn about his mother being a witch and an ex-BPRD member and how he is the harbinger of the apocalypse, which is really cool. Abe Sapien, of course, is one of my favorite characters in that. I'll talk a little bit more about that in the breakdown. It's so good. I mean, they killed Hellboy off in one of the um, one of the series that kind of separated it there. And a lot of fans, of course, were devastated. And Mike Mignola came back a little bit later with Hellboy in Hell, which just ended in June of this year. Really great series. He ended it beautifully for all of us fans. Some people were a little irate that it wasn't some kind of big giant battle scene. It was I, that I will not spoil for you because 
I really encourage you to go out and get these graphic novels and read them. They're so worth it, especially if you are a comic or even an animation fan. If you like the movies, you'll still love these. There's definitely not as much humor in this. I mean, Hellboy definitely has his sarcastic humor that Ron Perlman kind of ties into the movies, but the movies did definitely bring a little bit more of a comedic feel to it, which of course is Hollywood and that happens. So now that we've gone over a little bit more about Mike Mignola himself, let's head over to the breakdown of the statue and go over all these great pieces. I don't even know where to start on the statue. There are so many detailed pieces. Let's kind of work our way from the top and work our way down. The top head sculpt, which you can see here is the main head sculpt. The paint job on this statue, I cannot stress enough, is so beautifully done. It, all the airbrushing, all the detailing, I've never actually seen anything like this. Everyone that I've talked to so far has had no paint flaws, no problems. Like this was quality control and it's best from Sideshow. It is so beautifully done. The secondary head sculpt, which I forgot at home, I'm really sorry. Uh, here's a picture of it. It is the uh, crown head, which is, again, from the box art, you saw a picture there. It is a must-have for fans. The crown and the piece of that attached to the head are actually plastic. Like, totally okay with this detailing. It would have been a nightmare to keep that from breaking. It would have been way too fragile. And this way it holds up, it stays, it's, it's really nicely put together. I've never had any problems with it warping or bending. Maybe you might not want to put it too close to lighting because that could happen with anything that is plastic. Even polystone can do that with uh, too hot of a lighting. Let's go down to both the arms here. We'll jump into the second piece that I forgot. So this is his main gun arm. This is the one that I always keep on my statue. The sword is pretty cool. It reminds me of one of the animated movies that they did. It comes out right at the wrist. They just pop in both very easily. Uh, really cool detailing on those as well. The right hand of doom, which I'll turn around right now to show you that. So the right hand of doom that comes with the non-exclusive version, this one here is an open fist. The exclusive version, which you can see a picture of it right now here, is a closed fist version that comes with a little stand that you can put them on right there. You can display it all the time, which is a nice touch because Sideshow normally doesn't do this. Normally Sideshow will just, it's, you put it in the box and that's it. Sometimes on eBay you can find fans who have created secondary little holders, which is really neat. And that's a good place to look for those. I've even sculpted and, and put my different head sculpts in, in my display statue display cabinets like that. So let's kind of jump now into costuming because this is a huge part of the statue. The fabric on this is so nice. It's even got almost like a, they've dirtied it with a bit of airbrushing, which is really great. Kind of a little, like made it look more worn and old, which is definitely what we need in the Hellboy image. I love, they have wooden buttons like wooden buttons, like how amazing is that? And those wooden buttons are even on the back. And this little piece of detailing here where it splits open in the back. BPRD logo up here on the top, as well as wiring that goes all through the bottom. And the wiring continues going through this part here and it's great. The statue can get such a dynamic flare. The jacket fully comes off, both those hands come out. I forgot to mention the right hand of doom. I did have a problem with the magnetic, the magnet sticking. I actually had put two sided tape in there just to keep it on. What I would have liked to have seen with the right hand of doom is I would have actually liked to have seen it straight up in the air. And my brother-in-law agrees with me. A lot of the other fans that I've talked to, same thing. It would have been, a, cause I mean, Hellboy slammed his fist down. It's an indestructible piece of his body that cannot be harmed. Even with his super strength, it's something that he uses as a main weapon. And they just kind of hit it down off the side, which is a little bit saddening in its own self. It's still still great, but again, that's what, what we would have liked to have seen. Again, back to the costuming, you can take this jacket off and leave him with his shorts on, as well as there's a utility belt all in here. It goes all the way around the back, different compartments. It's from what I can feel made from real leather, which is, is really an immaculate touch on that one. And the belt is not magnetic on. You actually have to weave it like a real belt. It's really cool. I, I love the detail on it. 
going to the back of him, another piece that we have here. So his tail comes out. There's a little hole in the back of his shorts that you plug him in, which is kind of funny when you're actually try trying to do that. It's kind of dirty. Anyways, really cute. I like it. Everything comes out very easily. The base itself. I mean, Hellboy has a lot of religious context, obviously, demon, apocalypse, all that kind of stuff. The snake is a piece that's just sitting on here. There's no pegs or prongs or anything that it goes into. It just lightly sits on there. You can take it on. You can take it off. The rest of the base the frog is all attached. It's one solid piece, and it is weighty. Like, you... It's very strong. At first, when I first saw the production shot of just his little foot in the peg here, I was I was kind of like, how are they going to actually do this? Is it, you know, he just looks so, looks so fragile on the feet, but not a single problem with it at all. It's really, really great. So those are all the pieces that I can, yeah, all the pieces that it comes with. So great detailing, amazing, really well done. We talked about Mike Magnola in the box art. We've now talked about all the different breakdown on the pieces, my likes and dislikes. The one thing, if anyone from Sideshow is watching this video, please, us fans are waiting for an Abe Sapien. He is my favorite character. I would love an Abe here. I'm okay without having, you know, anyone else, but for the love of everything as a collector, please give me an Abe Sapien. I love the character in the comics. I love Doug Jones, like everything. I just, I want an Abe from the Mike Magnola um, edition. It would be just great. Now that we've talked about that and we've gone covered over everything, let's head over to learning about the different artists that were involved in the statue and who did what on it. It was a great pleasure to call out the different artists who worked on this statue. Chris Anka and Dylan Foreman were involved in the design. Matt Black and Nathan Mansfield did the sculpt on this statue. Rick Cantu, Anthony Mestez, and Tom Gillian were involved in paint. Dan Mahaller and Tim Hansen get a massive shout out for costume fabrication. This was amazing. And a big thank you for the Sideshow Collectible Design and Development team for coming together and creating the best Hellboy statue that I've seen to date. I don't want you to miss out on weekly videos here at Braddock Media, so make sure to click that subscribe button below, give a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I would love to hear your feedback in the comments. See you all next week.